tree will present about salt marshes and mud flats. So, uh, what is salt marshes and mud flats? Salt marshes and mud flats are low, wet, muddy areas that lie at the interface between the land and the sea. Uh, this, uh, this ecosystem are extremely valuable but often overlooked. Whatever organism that live in this habitat, they need to adapt with the changes in water, uh, water depth, uh, salinity and temperature. Salt marshes are categorized by seagrasses and other low-lying plants. However, this area does not have trees. Mud flats are formed when tides or rivers deposit layers of mud and also nutrients, uh, detritus. Mud flats are also associated with intertidal zones like bays, estuaries, and lagoons. Next. Uh, salt marshes and mud flats can be found in many places around the world. For example, the Humboldt Salt Marsh are located in the Humboldt Sink of northwestern Nevada in United States. This area was about 900 acres eight, uh, hey, <laughs> he and mostly was invaded by the aggressive dense flowered cod grass. This area also have mud flats area. Next is Gulf Coast salt marshes. These salt marshes occur along uh, along the Atlantic and Gulf Mexico coast. Uh, the northeast Gulf of Mexico shoreline contains about 60% of the coastal and freshwater marshes in the United States, including 400,000 to 500,000 uh, hectare of salt marshes in northern Florida alone. Gulf Coast marshes are well known for their abundant crustaceans, uh, gastropods and suspension feeders including filter crabs, gra grass shrimps, blue crabs, mice shrimp and marsh prewinkle. There are also few of salt marshes uh, and mud flats area in Malaysia. This area can be found in Kapa Mangrove, Kapa Mangrove ecosystem in Kuala Selangor and also Pulau Kukup in Johor National Park. Most of the mud flats and salt marshes area in Malaysia have been announced as Ramza site in order to protect the area from being destroyed due to the urban development. Next. Oh, sorry, saya lagi. <laughs> Marine organisms that can be found in salt marshes and mud flats are firstly the fauna. Uh, first, we have the fielder crabs, also known as uh, the scientific name is Yucca pugnax. And then we have Litorina irrorata, snails, uh, Crassotria virginica, oyster, and lastly, Geocansia demisa, mussel. Next. Uh, Uh, next, okay. Next is flora. Uh, the examples that uh, marine organism uh, examples of flora that have in salt marshes and mud flats, uh, Salicornia Euro europea, uh, or common glasswort, Spartina alterniflora, or smooth cord grass, and lastly Spartina patens, uh, or salt meadow cord grass. So these are the physical features of the mudflats and salt marshes. They have high saline uh, sedimentation because the sediments were flooded by tides regularly. The soil are muddy and rich in organic elements from peat. The soil also an aerobic due to flooding as flooding affects oxygen concentration in the substrate. And lastly, the salt marshes form in a temperate condition. So now, uh, this is a uh, unique characteristics of flora in salt marshes and mud flats. First is Salicornia europea. Uh, this is a type of flora that can live in salt marshes area. Plants in salt marshes can withstand brief of inhalation. However, it cannot tolerate prolonged submergence. Cook with salt by extruding entry into roots, removing salt between the cells and excreting salt via glands. Uh, the second one is Patina Alternatora. 
Uh, this is a smooth uh, grass able to tolerate with continuously changing of salinity due to its specialization. Platinum alkaniflora can transform salt water into fresh water by eliminating salt in salt water through its leaf. These adaptations enable smooth cold grass to be submerged for 12 hours at a time. Next. Uh, the third one is patina patterns. Patina patterns can be referred as salt meadow cold grass are well adapted to sandy and clay soils and able to tolerate with occasional inundation. Salt meadow cold grass has inwardly root leaves in order to prevent from water loss. Uh, this is the unique characteristic of fauna in salt marshes and mudflats. Uh, the first is uka pugnecks. Uka pugnecks have a large claw that enable fiddler crabs to grow in the salt marshes in order to prevent from inundation and predator. Fiddler crabs also have much higher average hemolim or smolality. The second one is the Gucansia demisa. Gucansia demisa can tolerate quite range of salinity from near fresh water up to 70 ppt which is twice the concentration of seawater. These mussels can open and close their shells to retain moisture and for protection. Mussels also helps in changing nutrient dynamics of much and estuary. Next. The last one is Littorina irorata. These nails can tolerate with, uh, with wide variations of salinity due to the ability of intracellular volume regulation were common in many other marine and estuary species. Littorina irrata also can tolerate with desiccation. So the case study that we found, uh, we picked, is the productivity and nutrient cycling in salt marshes, contribution to ecosystem health. Uh, so this, uh, this article studies the productivity and nutrient cycling for different halophytes that have different photosynthetic pathway, C3 and C4, of salt marshes. Uh, the question that, uh, sorry, uh, the question, does it have the same ability to reduce eutrophication and atmospheric CO2? Then they concluded that there are no strict and consistent relation between the biomass production carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycling, and the halophytes photosynthetic pathway. So even they have different photosynthetic pathway, they still have the same ability to reduce eutrophication and reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. And that's all from our presentation. Thank you. Very well done, Gupri. <laughs> nice one. Nice and sweet and concise. Okay, uh, the next group, please. Thank you, Dr. Next group, group five. Group four tak ada eh? Mm, group four tak ada. Hmm, tak boleh tahu pun terkejut. Okay. Alright, Assalamualaikum and good evening everyone. Uh, we are from group 5 and our topic is Estuary's Ecosystem. Um, everyone ready, right? Group 5? Okay. First, what is Estuary's? What is the definition of Estuary's? Alright, Estuary's is described as a narrow semi-enclosed coastal body of water which has a free connection with the open sea at least intermittently and within which salinity of the water is decreasing as go further into the estuaries area. In the picture, um, the estuaries is split into three areas, lower part, 
middle part and upper part. In the lower part, we have free connection. Um, the lower part is a free connection with the sea. That was a semi-enclosed part. And in the middle part is where the salt and fresh water mixing occur. And in the upper part, where fresh water tidal action occur. Next. Okay, for ecology that influence the estuary's characteristic have three, there's three. First is wave, second tides, and third is fluvial processes. In Malaysia, there are two types of tides. First is diurnal tides that usually happen in Peninsula Malaysia, and second is diurnal and semi-diurnal that occur in West Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak. Uh, for fluvial processes, fluvial processes is the physical interaction of the flowing water and natural channels of the rivers and stream. Fluvial processes cause the denudation of the land surface from high to lower levels. What, what is denudation is? Um, denudation adalah where the transports of the rock. Contohnya, uh, transportation to occur because of um, ice, water or wind and wave. Next. So this is the example of location uh, estuaries in Malaysia. The first one is the Kuala Petang located in Perak. Kuala Petang is the most popular estuaries in Malaysia. Second one is Cherating River located in Pahang. It is the one of the wettest places in Malaysia with heavy rainfall all year round. And lastly, it's the Merbuk River, located in Ketah. Next. Example of location uh, outside Malaysia. The first one is Chesapeake Bay. Uh, Chesapeake Bay ni the largest story in the United States. The second one is the Perancak, Perancak River located in Bali, Indonesia. And lastly is Tomish Estuaries located in Canada. Okay, next is the physical features of the estuaries. The first one is the tide. So the water level, they rise and fall uh, winning uh, the two factors. Uh, due to the daily tides and the weather. So the long period of the drought or the excessive rainfall will be affects the amounts of the fresh water entering the estuaries, uh, resulting in the changes of the physical, chemical and the biological conditions of the estuaries. The salinity varies throughout the tidal cycle. Next is the salinity. So the salinity, they higher near the river mouth where, where the ocean water enters compared to the upstream. Uh, the salinity decrease uh, during the springs and uh, when the rate of the rainfall increase, which increase in the precipitations, uh, then the salinity will increase during the summer and the drought uh, where there is the high in temperature and increasing in the evaporation. Uh, the osmosis and the diffusions are very important to the aquatic organism in order for them to achieve the equilibrium state when they live in the uh, uh, water column. Next is the catadromous and the anadromous fishes. So these are the two types of the fishes that uh, involve the ability to respond physically to the surrounding changes, especially in terms of the salinity. Next is the temperature. So when the temperature increase, it will affect the availability of the oxygen to dissolve into the water. Uh, the warm water, they actually can hold less than oxygen compared to the cold water. And the animal, the plants have their own optimal ranges of uh, temperature. Like for the salmon, they need to live in the low in temperature water because they require the high amount of the oxygen. When there is a shifting in the temperature, they obviously will affect their distributions 
as well as the abundances of other living organisms because it will influence their metabolic rate. The nutrients. The nutrients they play an important role in the life processes of the organism. There are the two major nutrients, which is the nitrogens as well as the phosphorus. But when there is the overabundances of these uh, nutrients, they will allow the reproductions of the algae and causes the algae blooms and will affect the entire marine ecosystem. Uh, next is the oxygen. So the oxygen are very important for a living organism as they will use up this organism to undergo the respiration process. The dissolved oxygen, they will be highly influenced by the temperatures and the salinity. When there is the high in salinity and temperatures, so the dissolved oxygen become low. But they will increase in the rate of the dissolved oxygen when there is the mixing in the surface water uh, due to the winds, uh, wave or the turbulence. Also, the decomposition process will reduce the dissolved oxygen in the water because during the decomposition process, they will consume a lot of the oxygen and they will create the oxygen depletion within the water column and it causes to the hypoxia condition. Next is the turbidity. So the increase in the suspended particle material inside the water column, they will affect the penetrations of the light that can uh, enter the water column. The cloudier the water, so the greater the turbidity. And this will affect most probably the aquatic uh, plants which is the phytoplankton, which are directly dependent on the light to undergo and perform the photosynthesis process. And when this happens, it will affect the entire marine food chain. Uh, next is the pH. So the optimal pH of the aquatic organism are between 5 to 9, but it can be altered the pH level uh, by the biological processes, including the photosynthesis process and calcification process. <coughs> Next is the space. So uh, usually, uh, organism, um, they um, living organism, they um, compete with uh, compete the space and the light uh, in terms of the physical attachment to the substrate or the base. Um, like for example, the terrestrial plant, they need the soil for the physical support and the source of the water and the nutrient. Also, the coral. They need a proper attachment to the substrate for their growth and the survival so that they can fight against the natural disturbances when there is the high tide or the strong wave actions occur. Also, the plants, um, the terrestrial plants or the aquatic plants, they need uh, the sunlight to undergo the photosynthesis uh, in which they will compete with the others for this space uh, so that they can get the optimum absorption of the sunlight. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so for um, as we all know that estuaries is um, a very stressful um, environment where the salinity always um, changing and it have an like, hypoxic soil. So there are very um, few organisms that can survive in estuaries. However, estuaries is a very um one of the most productive ecosystem in the world. So there are several um, organisms that can be found and some of them, uh, the first one is winter flounder or its scientific name is Pleuronectus americanus. The second one is Atlantic salmon um, or the scientific name is Salmo salar. And the last one is bay barnacles or the scientific name is Amphibalanus improvises. Okay, next. Okay, this is a uh, uh, these are some of the vegetations that can be found in historians. The first one is smooth cord grass or Spartina arteniflora. Second one is glasswort or Salicornia europei. And the last one is the broadleaf cattail or Typha latifolia. Okay, so in order to survive in these historic um, environments, these organisms have a several adaptation. So the first one for the flounder fish or we call it in Bahasa, uh, ikan sebelah, it, um, it can adapt to hypoxia condition. So hypoxia condition is a condition where the dissolved oxygen in the environment, in the water, is lower than the normal conditions. So um, this fish can maintain a constant oxygen extraction by um, they have a higher um, concentration of hemoglobin in their blood and also their hemoglobin has high oxygen affinity so what is that so 
high oxygen affinity is where the hemoglobins can release oxygen at a lower rate. So it means that their blood contain more oxygen than their tissue. Okay, next. Okay, the second one is Atlantic salmon. So um, Atlantic salmon are marine fish, but they are connected to the estuaries during the spawning season where they migrate to uh, from seawater to fresh water. They are anadromous fish, okay? So they have several adaptations. One of them is by osmoregulation. So osmoregulation means they can regulate the osmotic pressure by secreting an excess of salt or an excess of water inside their body. Doctor, do I need to explain detail about this? No, you're good. Um, unless some unless your batch forgotten about it, then maybe you can. But otherwise, I'm good. Mm. If you guys want to ask, okay, I pass. <laughs> okay, the next one is the barnacles. So um, some of the barnacles are known as um stenohyline, where they only um what we call they can adapt to several um, certain range of salinity, but these bay barnacles, they are urohyline, they can tolerate wide range of salinity. That, what, that is why they can survive in these um, use, use esteries. Okay. So they are also known as osmoconformers, where they can regulate their internal osmotic pressure by producing more osmolites inside their body, so that um, osmolite need the macam um, amino acid or sugar inside their body so that the concentration, the osmotic pressure inside their body are similar, are balanced to the external. Okay. So during, um, because, um, okay, even though they are Euro Highland, they can adapt to so, uh, tolerate wide range of salinity. However, they can only tolerate certain range. Means um, during um, um, apa, dilution where fresh water comes, um, they cannot, um, adapt to the situation so they um, have their valve closed when exposed to low salinity condition so inside their valve they maintain the or the hyper hyperosmotic environment so it means um inside them inside their valve it is um have higher salinity than than the outside okay so for the vegetations um, most of the vegetation have similar adaptation to what we have in mangrove. So for the coit grass, they have a deep root, deep roots for encourage because um, eucerys have a mud flat, so they have deeper. They they encourage deeper. Okay, next one is they have salt glands on their leaf that help to remove the excess salt. So okay, can, as can be seen here, um, the leaf, we can see from their leaf, they have a crystallized salt where the salt was excreted by the salt glands and during the evaporations, the salt was crystallized, okay. And also they have a thick cuticle and sunken stomata that help to reduce transpiration and conserve water because fresh water is really um, important for them. And last one is tiny tubular spaces. They have a tiny tubular spaces that run from the roots up through the leaves where these um, Spaces were connected to the open air for oxygen diffusion. Okay, next one. Um, okay, for the glasswort, uh, glasswort is a succulent herb that thrives in salty environments. Okay, um, this uh, species is very important in mud flats because it is in an indicator for the healthy mud flats. Okay, it is able to store um, the or accumulate uh, salt within the leaves and the stems. That's why their um their body their stems are succulent. Okay, and lastly, um uh, for the cattail, they adapted. Uh, they are able to adapt with a wide range of soil and water conditions. Their stems are well adapted in um low oxygen soils where their stems is actually they have erenchyma. It is an air spaces inside their stem that help in um oxygen diffusion. That's all. Very impressive group five. I'm actually very happy. So both group three and five have already set the, um, the standards. So nobody can do any lower than them. Yeah, good on you both uh, on both group three and five. So next group, please. Okay, next group. Doctor, um, last one, case study. Oh, oh no, I look at me. I got so impressed. I forgot about case study. Okay, continue, continue. 
Uh, okay, so this is our case study, which is uh, how dumpy waste impact on our history ecosystem. And this is a paper published from Utusan Digital website, which is Masalah Sampah Menghantui Nelayan. Uh, okay, garbage often ends up in these kinds of surface water because the fish waters collect in low lying areas. Anything that is dropped or blown into a wave into a watershed can eventually reach a drainage way, so it increases the chances of water flow to hot. This means the level of oxygen dissolved in the water will be decreased and has resulted in declining fish stocks. So next Dina. Next. Um, after migration, the fish will loss of habitat. Means that uh, loss habitat for breeding, for food sources, and this will lead to decline in fish stock. And also, it will impact the nearby community, like small area, kampung nilayan. Uh, and also, it can cause um, smelly. Um, cause smell, um, bad smell due to no water, uh, due to no flow of the water, water flow. And next, it will, um, the source, um, source of income and consumption of fish also will decrease. Economical service affected and also will affect human health. Uh, in serious case, it will cause, uh, in serious case, it will cause mal malnutrition. So, but fish can they provide um, human omega omega three. So the omega three too. And that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well done. Okay. Next group. Group six. Hello. Group six, study doctor, group seven. Ah, check up lah, kau pun lagi satu. <laughs> Sorry. Group seven tidur ke? Cepat-cepat sikit please. Group seven, your mic is not on ya. Yeah. Okay. Akmal, Akmal punya mic buka ke? Perhaps somebody else can um, talk for your behalf then? Or maybe use an earpiece? Uh, sorry, doctor. Okay. Uh, take it. Um, take over, Atiyah. Hello. 
Uh, I'm from group seven. Today we will present about marine ecosystem kelp forest. Okay, Atira, you uh, gonna quote sikit. Tak dengar. Okay, uh, hello. We are from. Tak dengar. Dia kena gempa sikit. Ah, uh, today. Uh, dengar tak doktor? Okay, okay. Tapi jangan lembut sangat. Oh, maybe go closer to the mic. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Ah. Uh, uh, hello, today, uh, hello, we are from group 7. Today we will present about marine ecosystem, cat forest. Okay, we will start with definition. Net. Uh, come on, Net. Langsung tak dengar apa-apa suara. Definition. Cat forests are often called underwater forests because they are layer and dominated by two canopy forming hard species which are giant cap and bull cap. Sekarang tak dengar lagi suara. Uh, doctor, uh, I will proceed uh, with Akma slides because she cannot, uh, the mic is problem. Okay, no problem, no problem. Continue. Okay, so the location at Malaysia. The first is a uh, Sibutin Mangrove Forest Reserve, which at Miri Sarawak. The second is Blue Lagoon Jalan Pantai, 71050 Port Dixon at Negeri Sembilan. Next slide. Okay. The next location is at Norway, Australia and Canada. The map is uh, referred to Lofoten to Westerlen at Norway. The next location is ST Margaret Bay at Nova Scotia at Canada. Next slide. Okay, animal, animal that can be found in cat forest is sea otter, which is anhydra lutris, sea urchin, anchinoidea, and dolphin, del delphinus. Specific species tak ada ke? Yes, uh, untuk yang tadi yang lang, untuk 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 Aiwan. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Untuk Aiwan tak ada specific species ke? Macam untuk sea urchins dengan dolphin. Uh, sebab uh, saya google dia banyak dia macam-macam species sea urchin ada kat uh, sana. So saya okay. letak yang general je. Alright. Kalau dolphin pun banyak jenis ke? Dolphin sama. Uh -uh. Ada battle brush uh, Lain 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 um, Okay dolphin boleh Tapi sort of dolphin sometimes because they are migratory So they are more open ocean My dear So perhaps just change this one a bit uh -huh. To find more organisms uh -huh. yang betul-betul Dari pada kelp Boleh Yang betul-betul needs kelp okay, Rather than okay. making it a stop But kalau open ocean semua Dolphin semua lebih uh, Macam appropriate lah That's why I ask what specific dolphin Boleh? So nanti, uh, we'll, boleh, okay. so nanti okay. we'll just to cut yes. this point a bit more, yeah? And then species, can I italics here? Ah, uh, okay. Mm, okay, continue. Next plan, for plan. 
plant that can be found in cat forest is diam kelp, which is Macrocytis pyrifera, bird cap, Nereocytis luitcana, or wheat, which is Laminaria set jelly. For physical features, first temperature. Cap needs suitable temperature to survive. They prefer cooler water and mostly inhabit temperate area such as in the intertidal zone and below low water, which is 5 until 20 degrees Celsius. As the water gets warmer, the concentration of nutrients declines and threaten the survival of the cat. Next, salinity. Salinity is important for the cat to survive. If the salinity increase, they can shrink as the water rush out from the cat, while if the salinity decrease, the cat can explode as the water will rush into the cells of the cat for settlement and growth. Next, for nutrient, cat favors nutrient-rich water as they need the nutrients to survive. The nutrients are absorbed by all parts of the cat to help in photosynthesis process. Then oxygen or dissolved oxygen is important to cat when the water condition is not favorable for cat such as lack of light. Cap use the oxygen to respiration called aerobic respiration. Also, the cells using the oxygen. Next, for currents, the current that driven by wind creates the upwelling to carrying the nutrients from the depth. From the death by as seasonal changes, the current stops the outwelling of nutrients and eventually weaken the cat forest. Next, waves. Strong waves are unfavorable conditions for cat because it can damage the parts of the cat, such as the blade. Also, waves can change the position of the cat. So that's why they need strong substrate. Next. Next is tide. Tides cause the changes of water level, cause, causing the cap being exposed on the surface periodically fluctuated with the incoming and outgoing tides. Then substrate. Hard substrate such as rock are the suitable substrate for cap as they need to attach their hole fast onto rock so they so that they did not floating away and eventually grows to the water surface. Next. Water clarity. For water clarity, cap is mostly live in shallow water and attached to substrate. And the clearer water helps the cap to absorbing sunlight as they can penetrate to the deeper water. For solar energy, cap is primarily producer that process their own food sources by absorbing solar energy from the sun using their blade. They can undergo photosynthesis to produce energy and food. Next. The unique characteristic for sea otter is sea otter is the most important species in cat forest. During sea urchin outbreak, the sea or the, the cat forest is affected due to high construction by sea urchin. Sea otter can maintain the balance of cat forest by controlling the population of sea urchin. They also know to crack off crack open the sea urchin with rock. As a top predator, sea otter also have a strong teeth and powerful bite to eat sea urchin and eat while they floating in the water.
They also redive around 250 feet and use their sensitive with sensitive whisker to detect small movement of fish between the kelp forest. Good eye saying to detect small prey such as crab and clam inside crack rock and fish between the kelp forest. They also use their strong forepaw to dig for clam. Their lungs also are 2.5 times greater than uh, other similar size of land mammal. They this helps them swim around five minutes around cat forest. Next is sea urchin. Next. Cats grow in cool, nutrient rich water along the coastal water, coastal ocean. However, due to warmer temperature of seawater, kelp rates decrease. Sea urchin can consume kelp and begin to emerge to other cat forests for enough food. The urchin also will survive in condition without presence of predators such as sea star. The urchin live in, in sea floor where they can feed the microalgae. They need the presence of predator to prevent outbreak and turn kelp community to oceanic desert. Sea urchin help to clean up any kelp that has fallen to the sea floor. Besides that, they also love to eat the whole fast of clad. Sea urchin also can protect themselves from other predators in kelp forests by pointing all their spines towards the area being poked when something sharp touch their shell. They also light sensitive. Uh, kelp forests help to cover sunlight from sea urchin in the sediment. Next is dolphin. Dolphin use cat forest as shelter and feeding ground. They are also one of the fastest animal, and this adaptation help them hunting for food in cat forest and avoid predators. They also had a good vision below water. This ability helps them to hunting and move between cat forest. Dolphin will circle the pools of fish and force them to the ocean surface and drive the fish to shallow water and far easier hunting than in the dense grouping of kelp. They also breathe air and, and hold their breath underwater. They have blow hole on the head to breathe when reach the water surface. That blow hole, blow hole also help to pro produce noise to communicate with other but dolphin to avoid detection in the dark kelp forest. They also use kelp for protection from current and tide. Next. The unique characteristic of the giant kelp is the giant kelp is the largest seaweed and the largest of all marine algae. It can reach high of more than 100 feet, which is 30 meter. Next, giant crab also live in cold and clear water. It can form large, dense crab forests that provide habitat for thousands of other marine species, such as the uchin. Sec uh, lastly, the giant crab also does not have fruits, but it can obtain all of the necessary nutrients directly from the water. It also can attach to the rocky bottom by a structure known as holfast. Holfast is a root-like structure. The unique characteristic of the bull cap is bull cap also have root -like, bull cap also have root-like holfast like the giant cap. The holfast has many finger-like production, haptera, that hold the plant tied to rocks. Bull cap also can oh, offer yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bull cap also can offer protective shelter for young fishes and many invertebrates such as sea urchin, sea star, snail and crabs. Bull cap also can have reproductive bush or spore that can heavy enough to drop to the ocean floor. Next slide. The unique characteristic of orbit, that known as laminaria, 
Laminaria also have a talus that is up to one meter tall and consists of a well branch of alphas that also have haptera. It can give rise to a single, erect unbranched and rigid types. Laminaria also prefer exposed habitat. It can found on rocks in the extreme low intertidal and upper subtidal. Laminaria also play habitat structuring role. It can protect coastline against erosion. It also can provide food, shelter, and nursery for marine organisms such as sea urchins, sea star, and also can support a well of biodiversity and ecosystem service. For case study, we chose about the cat forest that can help fight climate change. So when the Amazon area burns, so here come the interest in cultivating the cat forest that can absorb planet, warm, planet warming carbon emission, which is carbon dioxide. It is also because of the fireproof factor since these forests are underwater. So few researchers found that the, farm, the farming of this cat forest can counter the climate change because of the deforestation that causing the destroy of rainforests that play a role as carbon sinks. It is because the oceanic cat forests are fast growing and highly efficient for carbon storage. See, it is currently grown on a small scale for food medicines and cosmetic use. But scientists have proposed to grow these forests in large scale till they are mature, then harvest it and sink it in the ocean where they can capture the CO2. That's all from us, thank you.